The Oldsmobile V8, also referred to as the Rocket, is series of engines that was produced by Oldsmobile beginning in 1949. The Rocket, along with the 1949 Cadillac V8, were the first post-war OHV V8 engines produced by General Motors. Like all other GM divisions, Olds continued building its own V8 engine family for decades, adopting the corporate Chevrolet 350 small block and Cadillac Northstar engine only in the 1990s. All Oldsmobile V8s were manufactured at plants in Lansing, Michigan. All Oldsmobile V8s use a 90 degrees bank angle, and most share a common stroke dimension, 3.4375 in 87.31 mm for early rockets, 3.6875 in 93.66 mm for later generation 1 engines, and 3.385 in 86.0 mm for generation 2 starting in 1964. The 260 CU in 4.3L, 307 CU in 5.0L, 330 CU in 5.4L, 350 CU in 5.7L, and 403 CU in 6.6L engines are commonly called small blocks. 400 CU in 6.6L, 425 CU in 7.0L, and 455 CU in 7.5L V8s have a higher deck height 10.625 in 27.0 cm versus 9.33 in 23.7 cm to accommodate a 4.25 in 108 mm stroke crank to increase displacement. These taller deck models are commonly called big blocks and are 1 in 2.5 cm taller and 1.5 in 3.8 cm wider than their small block counterparts. The Rocket V8 was the subject of many first and lasts in the automotive industry. It was the first mass produced OHV V8 in 1949. The factory painted small blocks gold or blue flat black on the late model 307 CU in 5.0 L, while big blocks could be red, green, blue, or bronze, as is the case with all pre-1972 American passenger car engines, published horsepower and torque figures for those years were say, gross. As opposed to 1972 and later say net ratings, which are indicative of what actual production engines produce in there as installed state with all engine accessories full air cleaner assembly and complete production exhaust system in place topic <laughs> generation i the first generation of oldsmobile v8s ranged from 1949 to 1964 each engine in this generation is quite similar with the same size block and heads. Topic 303 The 303 cubic inch 5.0L engine had hydraulic lifters, an oversquare bore, stroke ratio, a counterweighted forged crankshaft, aluminum pistons, floating wrist pins, and a dual plane intake manifold. The 303 was produced from 1949 to 1953. Bore was 3.75 in 95 mm and stroke was 3.4375 in 87.31 mm. Cadillac used a distantly related engine which appeared in three different sizes through to the 1962 model year. Though the Oldsmobile and Cadillac motors were not physically related, many lessons learned by one division were incorporated into the other's design, and the result were two engines known for their excellent power to weight ratio, fuel economy, and smooth, strong, reliable running. The original Oldsmobile V8 was to have been marketed as Kettering power, after chief engineer Charles Kettering, but company policy prohibited the use of his name. Instead, the legendary rocket was born, available in Oldsmobile's 88, Super 88, and 98 models. The engine proved so popular, the division's 88 models were popularly called Rocket 88s. 
The 303 was available from 1949 through 1953. In 1949 through 1951 the two-barrel carburetor 303 produced 135 horsepower 101 kilowatts and 253 pound-feet 343 Nm, over 33% more power than the extremely popular and widely produced 100 horsepower 75 kilowatts 1949 Ford Flathead V8. 1952-88 and Super 88 volts 8s used a four-barrel carburetor for 160 horsepower, 120 kilowatts, and 265 pound-feet, 359 Nm, while four-barrel 1953 versions upped the compression from 7.5, 1 to 8.0, 1 for 165 horsepower, 123 kilowatts, and 275 pound-feet, 373 Nm. Applications 1949–1953 Oldsmobile 88 1949–1953 Oldsmobile 98 1952–1953 Oldsmobile Super 88 324 The 324 CU in 5.3 L version was produced from 1954 until 1956. Bore was increased to 3.875 in 98.4 mm, same as the later 283 Chevy, and stroke remained the same at 3.4375 in 87.31 mm. Two-barrel carburation was standard, all high-performance 324s came with four-barrel carburetors. The 324 was shared with GMC trucks. The 1954-88 and Super 88 volts 8s used an 8.25, 1 compression ratio for 170 and 185 horsepower 127 and 138 kilowatts and 295 and 300 pound-feet 400 and 407 Nm, respectively. The 1955 model upped the compression to 8.5, 1 for 185 horsepower, 138 kilowatts, and 320 pound-feet, 430 Nm, in the 88 and 202 horsepower, 151 kilowatts, and 332 pound-feet, 450 Nm, in the Super 88 and 98. For engines built during the first part of 1955, the 324 skirted pistons had a reputation for failing due to the cast aluminum skirt separating from its steel interior brace. This problem did not appear until the engine had over 50,000 miles kilometers on it. By late 1956, many Olds dealers learned about the problem. Compression was up again in 1956 for 230 horsepower, 170 kilowatts, and 340 pound-feet, 460 Nm, in the 88 and 240 horsepower, 180 kilowatts, and 350 pound-feet, 470 Nm, in the Super 88 and 98. Applications: 1954 to 1956 Oldsmobile 88. 1954 to 1956 Oldsmobile Super 88 1954 to 1956 Oldsmobile 98 Topic 371 Making its debut in 1957 as standard equipment on all Olds models the 371 was produced through 1960 Bore was now 4.0 in 100 mm and stroke was increased to 3.6875 in 93.66 mm for 371 CU in 6.1L 1959 and 1963 71s used green painted valve covers Four barrel models used 9.25, 1 compression in 1957 and 10 to 1 in 1958 for 277 horsepower, 207 kilowatts and 400 pound feet, 540 Nm and 305 horsepower, 227 kilowatts and 410 pound feet, 560 Nm respectively. 
A 1958 two-barrel version produced an impressive 265 horsepower, 198 kilowatts, and 390 pound-feet, 530 Nm, but had problems with early camshaft failures due to the high preload valve spring forces. Following the Automobile Manufacturer Association ban on factory-supported racing, power ratings went down for the 1959 and 1960 88 models, 270 horsepower 200 kilowatts and 390 pound-feet 530 Nm for 1959 and 240 horsepower 180 kilowatts and 375 pound-feet 508 Nm for 1960. It was no longer available in cars in 1961. This engine was used in GMC heavy trucks as the 370 of 232 gross HP at 4,200 RPM and torque 355 gross LBS feet at 2,600 RPM from 1957 to 1959. It had hardened valve seats and other features for heavy duty usage. Applications 1957 to 1960 Oldsmobile 88 1957 1958 Oldsmobile Super 88 1957 1958 Oldsmobile 98 Topic J2 Golden Rocket Introduced in the middle of the 1957 model year, the 1957 and 1958 J2 Golden Rocket had three two-barrel carburetors with a vacuum-operated linkage. Only the center carburetor was mechanically connected to the throttle pedal, and it was the only one equipped with a choke. When the center carburetor was opened to 60 degrees or more engine vacuum drawn from the windshield wiper pump would simultaneously open the front and rear carburetors. These carburetors did not open progressively, they were either open or closed. The J2 engine also had a slightly thinner head gasket, raising compression to 10.01. It was advertised with gross power and torque ratings of 312 horsepower, 233 kilowatts at 4600 revolutions per minute and 415 pound-feet, 563 Nm at 2800 revolutions per minute. Oldsmobile charged $83 for the J2 option with the 3 speed manual, or in the 98, $314 with the automatic. In practice, owners who did not regularly drive hard enough to engage the front and rear carburetors experienced problems with the linkage and carburetor throats becoming clogged, and some J2 equipped cars had the front and rear carburetors removed and blocked off. Moreover, correct tuning was a continual headache. The package was expensive to produce, and Oldsmobile discontinued it after 1958. Topic 394. Bore was up to 4.125 in 104.8 millimeters for the largest first-generation rocket, the 394 CU in 6.5L. 394s were produced from 1959 to 1964 and were available on many Olds models. Most 394s used two barrel carburetors. Power was up to 315 horsepower, 235 kilowatts, even though compression was down a quarter point to 9.75. One, the 394 replaced the 371 in Super 88 and 98 cars for 1959 and 1960, and a detuned version was used in the 88 for 1961 and the Dynamic 88 for 1962 to 1964. Applications. 1959-1960 Oldsmobile Super 88, 315 horsepower, 235 kilowatts, and 435 pound-feet, 590 Nm. 1959-1960 Oldsmobile 98, 315 horsepower, 235 kilowatts, and 435 pound-feet, 590 Nm. 1961 Oldsmobile 88, 250 horsepower, 190 kilowatts, and 405 pound-feet, 549 Nm. 
1962 to 1964 Oldsmobile Dynamic 88, 280 horsepower, 210 kilowatts, and 430 pound-feet, 580 Nm. 1964 Oldsmobile Jetstar I, 345 horsepower, 257 kilowatts, and 440 pound-feet, 600 Nm. Topic: Sky Rocket. The 1961 through 1963 Sky Rocket and 1964 Rocket was a high compression, four-barrel, 394 cu in 6.5 L engine. The 10 to 1 compression 1961 model produced 325 horsepower, 242 kilowatts, and 435 pound-feet, 590 Nm, while the 10.25/1-1962-1964 version upped power to 330 horsepower, 250 kilowatts, and 440 pound-feet, 600 Nm. A special 1963 10.5, one version was also produced with 345 horsepower 257 kilowatts. Applications 1961-1963 Oldsmobile Dynamic 88 option 1961-1964 Oldsmobile Super 88 standard 1961 to 1964 Oldsmobile 98 standard topic Starfire the high compression four barrel 394 cu in 1964 Starfire produced 345 horsepower 257 kilowatts and 440 pound feet 600 Nm for the 1963 to 4 Starfire and 98 custom sports coupe it was optional on 1964 98s and super 88s topic <laughs> aluminum 215 From 1961 to 1963, Oldsmobile manufactured its own version of the Buick-designed, all-aluminum 215 cubic inch V8 engine for the F85 Compact. Known variously as the Rocket, Cutlass, and Turbo Rocket by Oldsmobile, and as Fireball and Skylark by Buick, it was a compact, lightweight engine measuring 28 in 71 centimeters long, 26 in 66 centimeters wide, and 27 in 69 centimeters high, same as the small block Chevy, with a dry weight of only 320 pounds, 150 kilograms. The Oldsmobile engine was very similar to the Buick engine, but not identical. It had larger wedge combustion chambers with flat-topped rather than domed pistons, six bolts rather than five per cylinder, and slightly larger intake valves. The valves were actuated by shaft-mounted rocker arms like the Buick and Pontiac versions, but the shafts and rockers were unique to Oldsmobile. With an 8.75, one compression ratio and a two-barrel carburetor, the Olds 215 had the same rated HP, 155 horsepower 116 kilowatts at 4,800 revolutions per minute, as the Buick 215, with 220 feet lbf 300 Nm of torque at 2,400 revolutions per minute. With a four-barrel carburetor and 10.25, one compression, the Olds 215 made 185 horsepower 138 kilowatts at 4,800 revolutions per minute and 230 pound-feet 310 Nm at 3,200 revolutions per minute with a manual transmission. With a four-barrel carburetor and 10.75, one compression, the Olds 215 made 195 horsepower 145 kilowatts at 4,800 revolutions per minute and 235 pound-feet 319 Nm at 3,200 revolutions per minute with an automatic. The Buick version was rated at 200 horsepower with an 11 to 1 compression ratio. The Buick version of the 215 V8 went on to become the well-known Rover V8, which still remains in limited production, utilizing the Buick-style pistons, heads, and valve train gear. 
The Oldsmobile engine block formed the basis of the Repco 3-liter engine used by Brabham to win the 1966 and 1967 Formula One World Championships. The early Repco engines produced up to 300 bhp 220 kilowatts, and featured new SOHC cylinder heads and iron cylinder liners. The 1967 and later versions of the Repco engine had proprietary engine blocks. In the mid-1980s, hot rodders discovered the 215 could be stretched to as much as 305 cu in 5L, using the Buick 300 crankshaft, new cylinder sleeves, and an assortment of non-GM parts. It could also be fitted with high-compression cylinder heads from the Morgan Plus 8. Using the 5-liter rover block and crankshaft, a maximum displacement of 317.8 cu in 5208 cc is theoretically possible. Topic: <inaudible> Turbo rocket In 1962 and 1963 Oldsmobile built a turbocharged version of the 215, designated Turbo Rocket. The turbocharger fitted to the V8 engine was a small diameter Garrett T5 model with integral wastegate, manufactured by Garrett Air Search, and produced a maximum of 5 psi boost at 2,200 revolutions per minute. The engine had 10.25, one compression and a single barrel carburetor. It was rated at 215 horsepower 160 kilowatts at 4,600 revolutions per minute and 300 pound-feet 410 Nm at 3,200 revolutions per minute. In development, the high compression ratio combined with the charged load created problems with spark knock on hard throttle applications, which led Olds to develop and utilize a novel water injection system that sprayed metered amounts of distilled water and methyl alcohol, dubbed turbo rocket fluid, into the intake manifold air stream to cool the intake charge. If the fluid reservoir was empty, a complex double float and valve assembly in the turbo rocket fluid path would set a second butterfly positioned between the throttle butterfly and the turbocharger into the closed position, limiting the amount of boost pressure. Unfortunately, many customers did not keep the reservoir filled, or had mechanical problems with the turbocharger system which resulted in many of the turbocharger installations being removed and a conventional four-barrel carburetor and manifold installed in its place. The Turbo Rocket V8 was offered exclusively on the Oldsmobile Jetfire, a special version of the Cutlass Compact Hardtop Coupe, which is noteworthy as it one of the world's first in fact the second turbocharged passenger car ever offered for public sale. The Chevrolet Corvair Spider Turbo, likewise a forced induction i.e. turbo-powered car, predated the Oldsmobile Jetfire Turbo, however by only a few weeks, thus being the world's very first turbocharged commercially sold vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Generation 2 The second generation of Oldsmobile V8s was produced from 1964 to 1990. Most of these engines were very similar, using the same bore centers and a 9.33 and 237 mm deck height, raised on big block versions to 10.625 and 269.9 mm. Big block and diesel versions also increased the 2.5 in 64 mm main bearing journal to 3.0 in 76 mm for increased strength. All Generation 2 small block Olds V8s used a stroke of 3.385 in 86.0 mm. The big block engines initially used a forged crankshaft with a stroke of 3.975 for the 1965, 1967, 425 and 400 SID versions. Starting in 1968, both the 400 CU in 6.6L and the 455 CU in 7.5L big blocks used a stroke of 4.25 in 108 mm with crankshaft material changed to cast iron except in a few rare cases. 
These were wedge head engines with a unique combustion chamber that resulted from a valve angle of only 6 degrees. This was much flatter than the 23 degrees of the small block Chevrolet and 20 degrees of the Ford small block wedge heads. This very open and flat chamber was fuel efficient and had lower than average emissions output. It was the only GM engine to meet U.S. emission standards using a carburetor all the way up to 1990. Topic 330. The first second-generation Oldsmobile V8 330CU in 5.4L Jetfire rocket introduced in 1964 and produced through 1967. It was released one year earlier than the Tall Deck 425, and debuted the standard 3.385 in 86.0 mm stroke, bore was 3.938 in 100.0 mm. 330s were painted gold and had forged steel crankshafts. The four-barrel versions had a larger diameter harmonic damper, the two-barrel only a balancer hub without the rubberized outer ring. Topic 400 The 400 CU in 6.6 L version was the second tall deck, big block, olds. Two distinct versions of the 400 SID engine were made, 1965-1967. Early. 400s used a slightly oversquare 4.000 in 101.6 mm bore and 3.975 in 101.0 mm stroke for an overall displacement of 399.6 cubic inches 6,549 cc. All the pre-1968 engines used a forged steel crankshaft. 1968 and 1969 400s shared the old's big block standard 4.25 in 108 mm stroke with the 455 but used a very undersquare 3.87 in 98 mm bore to comply with GM's displacement restrictions in the A-body cars while also reducing tooling costs. Displacement is very close to the earlier engine, at 399.9 cubic inches 6,554 cc. This later 400 is considered less desirable by many enthusiasts, because of the power band characteristics induced by this exceedingly undersquare format, although the actual change in power was due to the mild 250-264 duration cam used in this engine previous 400s used a 278-280 seconds cam and the fact that the crankshafts were now made of less durable high nodular iron material. Early 400s used the same forged steel crankshaft as the 425, while later 400s used the same cast iron crankshaft of the 455, with rare exceptions, some 1968 and later Olds 400-455s were produced with forged steel crankshafts. These rare cranks can be readily spotted by the J shaped notch in the OD of the rear flange. Cast iron cranks have a C. Shaped notch. All 1965-1969 Olds 400s were painted bronze. Topic. 4-4-2 rocket. The 1967-400 engine was a short-stroke 1966-1967 only engine. It featured B and C cast large valve cylinder heads and hydraulic lifters are larger in diameter and push rods are different length and diameter than the standard Olds Rocket V8. It was rated at 350 horsepower and 440 pounds per foot of torque with a Rochester 4 barrel and 360 horsepower with the L69 Tri-2 barrel option in 1966 and 360 horsepower in 1967. It was equipped with a W 30 camshaft and outside air induction, 502 factory examples of this engine were produced. 
They were all painted bronze and had V and G stamped on the cylinder heads. 0 .400 CU in 6.6 L V8. Topic 425. The 425 CU in 7.0 L big block was the first tall deck big block. Produced from 1965 through 1967. It is arguably the best engine Olds made in the muscle car era, although it never made it into a muscle car. It used a 4.126 in 104.8 mm bore and 3.975 in 101.0 mm stroke. Most 425s were painted red, though the 1966 and 1967 Toronado units were light blue. All 425 engines were fitted with forged steel crankshafts with harmonic balancers. Topic: <laughs> Super Rocket The standard 1965-1967-425CU in 7.0L was called the Super Rocket, and was the most powerful engine option for the Oldsmobile 88 and 98 of 1965-1967. Compression ratios of 9.0, 1 at 310 horsepower 230 kilowatts or 10.25, 1 at 360 horsepower 270 kilowatts were available in the U.S. Topic. Starfire A special 1965-1967-425CU in 7.0L V8 was the Starfire engine. The main distinguishing features of this engine were a slightly different camshaft profile from the standard ultra-high compression engine and factory dual exhaust. This engine was only available in the Oldsmobile Starfire and a performance economy model called the Jetstar I. It shared the same compression ratio of the Toronado rocket at 10.5.1. It also used the .921 in lifter bore size of the Toronado rocket. <laughs> topic. Toronado rocket An ultra-high compression Toronado rocket version of the 425CU in 7.0L V8 was made for the 1966 Toronado. It had the same 0.921 in 23.4 mm diameter lifters of the first generation Oldsmobile engines, rather than the standard 0.842 in 21.4 mm, which let engineers increase the camshaft's ramp speed for more power, 385 horsepower, 287 kilowatts, without sacrificing idle or reliability. Unlike all other 425s, this version was painted slate blue metallic. Topic 455. The 425's stroke was lengthened to 4.25 in 108 mm to achieve a 455 cu in 7.5 l to create the rocket 455 for 1968. It kept the retired 425's 4.126 in 104.8 mm bore to produce between 275 and 400 horsepower 205 and 298 kilowatts, 279 and 406 PS. Initially the paint was red, except for metallic blue in the Toronado applications, 1970-1976 versions were metallic blue at first, then non-metallic blue. The rocket name disappeared from the air cleaner identification decal after 1974. Although production of the 455 ended in 1976, a small number were produced through 1978 for power equipment use, such as motor homes, boats and irrigation equipment. Applications Oldsmobile Cutlass Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser 1970-76 Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser Oldsmobile 4 4 2 
Oldsmobile Hearst Olds 390 horsepower 291 kilowatts Oldsmobile Delta 88 Oldsmobile 98 1968 to 1970 Oldsmobile Toronado 375 horsepower 280 kilowatts 1968 to 1970 Oldsmobile Toronado GT W34 400 horsepower 300 kilowatts 1973 to 1976 GMC Motorhome Topic 350 Produced from 1968 to 1980, the Rocket 350 was entirely different from the other GM division's 350s. It used a 4.057 in 103.0 mm bore and Oldsmobile small block standard 3.385 in 86.0 mm stroke for 350 cu in 5.7L. Output ranged from 160 to 325 horsepower, 119 to 242 kilowatts. 1968 to 1974 350s were painted gold. 1975-1976 350s were metallic blue like the 455. 1977 to 1980 models were painted GM corporate blue. The Rocket Name disappeared from the air cleaner decal in 1975, the same year that the catalytic converter was added to the emission control systems. The early Oldsmobile 350s made from 1968 to 1976 are more desirable engines with heavy castings, beefier crankshafts, and better flowing heads. The later 1977-1980-350 had the lightweight castings, including a thinner block with large windows. In the main bearing bulkheads, crack-prone head castings which were actually manufactured by Pontiac Motor Division castings are marked PMD. These heads were also used on the 260, and a lightened crankshaft. Some latter versions of this 350 were produced with an analog electronic port fuel injection system, introduced in the Cadillac Seville of 1976. Applications 1976-1979 Cadillac Seville 1979 Cadillac Eldorado 1968-1977 Oldsmobile Cutlass 1968-1977 Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser 1973-1977 Oldsmobile 4-4-2 1968-1980 Oldsmobile Delta 88 1977-1980 Oldsmobile 98 1979-1981 Oldsmobile Toronado 1973 to 1979 Oldsmobile Omega Topic L34 Oldsmobile's own L34 350 cubic inch 5.7L V8 was used in the 1976 Oldsmobile Cutlass S 1979 Hearst Olds models and 1980 4 4 2 The L34 used a four-barrel carburetor and produced 160 to 170 horsepower, 120 to 130 kilowatts and 275 feet lbf, 373 Nm. Topic 403 The 455 Big block. Olds V8 was replaced in 1977 with the 403 CU in 6.6L. Small block. V8. It used a wide 4.351 in 110.5 mm bore, the largest ever used in a small block V8, with the old small block standard deck and 3.385 in 86.0 mm stroke. The bore was so wide that the cylinder walls were CMS'd, similar to the Chevrolet 400 SID small block engine, 
there was no space for coolant flow between the cylinders. This sometimes led to overheating problems. Some very early 403s were painted metallic blue like the 455, but most were painted GM corporate blue. The Olds 403 was used by Buick and Pontiac in addition to Oldsmobile. The engine was only produced through 1979. Output was 185 horsepower, 138 kilowatts, and 320 pound-feet, 430 Nm. The Toronado version of the 1977 Oldsmobile 403 engine was fitted with a crank-triggered ignition system. Parts peculiar to this system include a toothed disc between the harmonic balancer and the crank pulley, the adjacent sensor, which predated the modern-day crankshaft position sensor, which Oldsmobile used with their Quad 4 in the late 1980s with a cast-in-toothed section of the crankshaft, a special distributor, an engine temperature sensor, and a rudimentary computer mounted inside the car, under the dash. No other years or models were provided with this system. Applications 1977 Buick Century Estate 1977-1978 Buick Riviera 1977-1979 Buick Electra 1977-1979 Buick Estate Wagon 1977-1979 Buick LeSabre 1977 Oldsmobile Cutlass 1977 Oldsmobile 4 2 1977 Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser 1977-1978 Oldsmobile Delta 88 1977-1978 Oldsmobile Toronado 1977-1979 Oldsmobile 98 1977-1979 Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser 1977 Pontiac Bonneville 1977 to 1979 Pontiac Catalina Safari 1977 to 1979 Pontiac Trans Am 1977 to 1979 Pontiac Firebird Formula 6 6 L 1977 Pontiac Grand Prix available with California emissions only 1977-1978 GMC Motorhome Topic 260 A smaller 260 CU in 4.3L V8 was produced in 1975 by decreasing the bore to just 3.5 in 89 mm this was the first power plant to use the smaller Rochester Dualjet 2 barrel carburetor. All 260s used it. Production of the 260 V8 ended in 1982 when the 307 became the only gasoline V8 in Oldsmobile's line. The 260 was designed for economy and it was the first engine option above the 3.8L Buick V6 standard in many Oldsmobile models by the late 1970s. While the 260s were not very powerful compared to the larger 350 and 403 volts 8s, fuel economy was almost as good as the base V6. Compared to the V6, the 260 was also smoother running, and far more durable. Most 260s were coupled to the turbo hydromatic 200. A 5-speed manual transmission was also available with some 260-equipped vehicles. The LV-8 was produced from 1975 to 1982. It produced 105 horsepower, 78 kilowatts, and 205 pound-feet, 278 Nm. Applications: 1975 to 1977 Pontiac Ventura, 1975 to 1977 Pontiac Lemons. 1975 to 1982 Oldsmobile Cutlass 1975 to 1977 Oldsmobile Omega 1975 to 1977 Buick Skylark 1977 to 1982 Oldsmobile 88
Topic 307. A slightly larger 307 CU in 5.0 L version was introduced in 1980. It uses a 3.8 in 97 mm bore in common with the Buick 231 V6 and 350 V8 with a 3.385 in 86.0 mm stroke. Some early 307s were painted GM corporate blue, but most were painted satin black. It was used in most Oldsmobile models, as well as those from Buick, Cadillac, Chevrolet, and Pontiac. Every 307 used a four-barrel carburetor, which was a variant of the Rochester Quadrajet, usually the CCC Computer Command Control Quadrajet. The output of the 307 CU in 5.0L wasn't particularly high in terms of horsepower. For example, the stock non-high output VIN Y 307 CU in 5.0L in the 1983 Oldsmobile 98 was a mere 140 horsepower, 100 kilowatts, although in that year a high output model VIN 9 was available producing a nominal 180 horsepower 130 kilowatts at approximately 245 pound feet 332 nm torque the final 1990 configuration was rated at 140 horsepower 100 kilowatts at 3200 revolutions per minute and 255 pound feet 346 nm of torque at 2000 revolutions per minute the combination of good low RPM torque, the Quadrajet 4 barrel carburetor, and the THM 204R 3 speed plus overdrive automatic transmission having a lockup torque converter allowed for fairly good performance, and fuel economy considered reasonable for the era, even in the larger and heavier model cars. The engine is also known for its reliability, smoothness, and quietness. Applications 1980-1985 Oldsmobile 88 1980-1984 Oldsmobile 98 1980-1985 Oldsmobile Toronado 1980-1990 Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser 1980-1985 Buick LeSabre 1980-1984 Buick Electra 1980-1985 Buick Riviera 1980-1990 Buick Estate Wagon 1986-1987 Buick Regal 1986-1990 Chevrolet Caprice Wagon 1986-1987 Cadillac Brome VIN 9 includes early model 1988 Brougham's made in 1987 1981 Pontiac Bonneville 1986 Pontiac Parisienne The 307 was fitted in some late model 1986 Parisiennes while others had the Chevy 305. <laughs> LV2 Oldsmobile used the popular LV2, a 307 cubic inch 5.0L engine, commonly known by the VIN code Y, from 1980 to 1990. It was used by every domestic GM automobile mark except for GMC and Saturn. In 1985, roller lifters, floating piston wrist pins, and swirl port intake runners were added. The 307 Y Produced 148 horsepower, 110 kilowatts, and 250 pound-feet, 340 nm, in 1980 to 1984 models, and 140 horsepower, 100 kilowatts, and 250 pound-feet, 340 nm, in 1985 to 1990s. All LV2s feature a four-barrel carburetor. Y version applications. 1980-1985 Buick LeSabre 1980-1985 Buick Riviera 1986-1987 Buick Regal 1986-1990 Chevrolet Caprice 1980-1985 Oldsmobile 88 
1980–1984 Oldsmobile 98 1980–1985 Oldsmobile Toronado 1980–1990 Oldsmobile Custom Cruiser 1980–1981 Oldsmobile Cutlass 1982–1987 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme 1988 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme Classic 1982–1986 Pontiac Parisienne Vin. Y. 1988–1990 Cadillac Brome Vin. Y. LG8 The LG8 was a modern 307 CU in 5.0L high output derivative of the LV2 produced from 1983 to 1987. Performance modifications included a hot camshaft in reality, just a camshaft used in various applications during the 70s with 0.440.440 lift and 196 degrees, 208 degrees duration at 0 .050. Stiffer valve springs, a larger vibration damper same as all 73, 79350s, 403s, and 455s, a Y-pipe dual outlet exhaust system, and richer secondary metering rods in the carburetor. It was offered in the Hearst – Olds version of the Oldsmobile Cutlass Calais and in the 4-4-2 version of the Oldsmobile Cutlass Salon. Output for 1983–1985 was 180 horsepower and 245 pound-feet Revisions to the engine for 1986 included roller lifters with a slightly smaller camshaft .435 lift and 194 degrees, 210 degrees duration at .050. New heads with smaller, swirl port intake runners, floating piston pins, and larger piston dishes for lower compression 8.0, 1V, 8.4, these changes increased torque to 250 pound-feet but lowered power to 170 horsepower 130 kilowatts, while lowering the RPM at which peak power and torque was achieved. Applications 1983–1984 Hearst, Olds 1985–1987 Oldsmobile 4-4-2 1985 to 1988 Cadillac Brome Vin 9 Topic Generation 3 The Generation 2 V8 ended production in 1990. The company later introduced a new vehicle, the Oldsmobile Aurora, with a new generation V8. Based on the Cadillac Northstar engine, this, called Aurora, was a DOHC design. From the 1950s through the late 1970s, each GM division had its own V8 engine family. Many were shared among other divisions, but each design was unique. Buick V8 engine Cadillac V8 engine Chevrolet small block engine Chevrolet big block engine Pontiac V8 engine Holden V8 engine M later standardized on the later generations of the Chevrolet design GMLT engine, generation 2 small block GMLS engine, generation 3, IV small block List of GM engines Topic. See also Oldsmobile straight 6 engine Oldsmobile straight 8 engine Oldsmobile diesel engine